Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking to you about domes in Revit. Now to make this interesting I'm going to be modeling both a modern dome as well as a traditional style dome. So for the modern dome it will be just a glass dome in Revit and for the traditional one it will be something similar to famous Brunelleschi's Cathedral of Florence dome. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot, and if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe, because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. Here I am in Revit, so I'm just going to go into the architectural template, and I'm going to set the units to meters for this project, and I'm going to give it two decimal places. For the modern dome, I'm just going to go here to level 2, so let's place it just at level 2, and I know now you're waiting for me to go to massing and site and create an in-place mass for this dome, but no, there is a simpler way in this case, so I'm just going to go here to insert and go load family, and we already have here in US metric, I'm just going to search for mass, and here we have some mass families. So here we can search for a dome, and here we have M dome, which means just mass dome, and we can open this up, and then we can place it in the project. So I'm just going to go to architecture, component, and place it just right here. But we, as you can see, we have this warning over here, which just means that this isn't visible. So if I go into 3D, you can see we can't or you, you, you can't see basically. So you can go here into reveal hidden elements and if you zoom out here you can see your dome and the reason why we can't see it so let me just turn this off is because when we go to massing on a site the show mass is turned off. So if I just turn this on we can see our dome and this is a cool parametric dome so if you go into south elevation perhaps here you can see you can set all these different parameters you can make it bigger you can kind of close it up, almost make it a sphere, but it just doesn't go to a sphere. It stays kind of a half sphere or just a part of a sphere. Then you can change the diameter a bit or you can make it wider, I guess. So you can play around with these and you can kind of pull it up, pull it down. Wait, what, what does this slider do? Yeah, this extends it and this kind of stretches it. Okay, but you get the point, you can play around with it. So I'm just going to be placing a dome like this and you can of course go to the properties panel and set the radius and height to your desired radius and height. So I don't really care for size of this dome, so I'm just going to leave it at what it already is. So now to turn this into a glass dome, you need to go here to massing and site and find this curtain systems. You need to select both halves of your dome and you need to go into create system. And you get something that looks like this. So you have your dome system and let's go into realistic. And as you can see this is kind of a blank glass dome but usually this doesn't really look realistic enough because it doesn't have any mullions so it looks kind of unfinished. So I'm just going to go here to architecture, find the mullion, choose all grids and then just select one half of the dome and then the other half just go to all grids for some reason it doesn't want to select everything okay here we go so we have our dome completely finished with mullions and everything and now we can go to massing inside and turn off the mass so we're left with only the dome and you can select this whole dome, just a second, let me... Okay, when you select everything you can go into edit type and by changing the parameters of these grid spacings you can kinda change the number of sides the dome has or the number of separations you have over here, so you can play around with that. Okay, this basically concludes the glass dome or the modern dome in Revit. Now for the traditional one we're going to be doing like the Cathedral of Florence by Filippo Brunelleschi dome except that was an eight side dome and just to keep it simple I'm going to be doing a six side dome. So how do you create something like that? And again I know you're thinking I'm probably going to go to in place mass. I tried it and it doesn't really look right when you add materials like 
walls or roofs to the dome so I prefer doing in architecture and component in place or model in place family it looks a bit better and it's easier to construct so I'm just going to go into a generic model and go into well let's just go into level 1 or maybe level 2 to, to see this dome okay so we can kinda escape here to decide a bit okay so now to model it you need to kinda throw some lines around so you can have basically some detailed components or symbolic lines that help you determine the size of your dome so first I'm just going to go to inscribe polygon choose six sides and create something that looks kinda like well let's try something like this okay it's 11 meters in diameter that's quite alright then I'm going to just do a circle around this thing and if you can find the center just draw a line like this and go circle and create a circle like that now this was this is a six part dome so it's a bit different to construct so I'm going to be doing that just by creating again going to annotate symbolic lines and then I'm just going to pull one line out like this so basically the end of this line will be the center of the diameter of the second radius circle and if this doesn't make sense at the moment don't worry it will make in a second so I'm just going to go again symbolic line circle and you choose this as a center you connect it to this so you get this point over here so this is the radius so we will have like six of these radiuses and if it's a bit too much or too big you can kinda make this a bit smaller you delete this and you go again annotate symbolic line and there's no shortcut for this command that's too bad and you do it like this okay so you know this is here and now you need to throw in some reference planes to make everything easier to work with so just go to create and reference plane or just use the shortcut RP which I'm going to do so you just throw around a couple of these vertical reference planes like so so you need the center you need this outside bit and you need this here center of rotation so you go RP create and one like this and you need a work plane on which your is this parallel doesn't look parallel okay let's try again yeah this is right this one isn't parallel as well okay okay so we have these three parallel lines and now we need a line to or a plane to work on so I'm just going to go reference plane and place one like this in the center and let's just name it F slash B or front the back plane and let's just go to south elevation and now as you can see here we have these three planes and let's just create another plane just to have something to work off from here or maybe bring it down here yeah this is a bit better okay so now you can create finally your structure so you go to create you go revolve and here you pick a plane by name and you go front back okay and now we can use this for the boundary line we can use the arc tool start off from this outside reference plane from this intersection point and go all the way up here maybe like this perhaps you make some dome shape like so then let's kinda cut it over here make perhaps an extension like this yeah this looks cool and then you just trim and extend this in place you use offset let's use 0.3 meters yeah that looks alright so you create something that looks like this then again trim and extend this in place let's create a line like so split element tool for this and then again trim and extend to trim everything in place okay so we have kind of a profile over here for one of our six parts and now for the access line we need to place that over here so I'm just going to use pick lines tool and place it over here for the access line and here for the constraints and the start and end angle for the start angle I'm going to type in 10 degrees and for the end angle I'm going to type minus 10 
you go apply okay okay we forgot over here to close this up that's a rookie mistake and again trim and extend this and you go finish and you get something that looks like this so you go to site plan and you check it out yeah that looks quite all right and now we need a void to cut this so just go create void form extrusion and you go not pick lines use this you go from center all the way here you move up and then you just grab everything that's around kind of like so to this point to this point you go finish you go into 3d where it is okay there it is so we select this void extend it down a bit extend it up a bit and you're left with this one sixth of a dome and now you can select this element and you can add some material let's just make it white because everything looks good in white go OK yeah that looks fine and now you just go finish model and you go into site plan so you have something that looks like this and if you're annoyed with these lines over here you can go edit in place and just delete all of these lines you don't really need them perhaps this one too maybe this one yeah and you just go finish okay we didn't delete this one yeah and you can really see the reference lines okay so let's just turn this into a dome so I'm just going to select it go into rotate or use the shortcut RO go to copy place the center of rotation in the center of rotation and type in 60 then you select two of these yeah then you go again RO 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 for rotate copy place place it in the center you go 120 and then again you just type in RO copy place center of rotation 120 and for some reason the array doesn't really work that well for this I don't really know why so that's why I'm using copy if you're questioning that okay so here we have our dome let's add some shadows and it looks quite all right it's simple you can always add more detail but this is just the general way how you go about creating this traditional style dome in Revit okay so this is pretty much it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions you can always leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day